Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to school. Isn't this awesome? Plug yours, Micah. Yeah, I got to celebrate with some cowbell. Hope you guys had a great spring break, and it is great to see you here in class in person. Um, we're ready to, to, to make a final push these final two months uh, and get you ready for seventh grade, right? Awesome, huh? Okay, here's the CPM lesson. We're starting chapter seven. Been doing some review to sort of finish up six and get you ready. And now we're gonna have at it with chapter seven, the first lesson, 7.1.1. Uh, don't forget, you wanna establish the habit, if you haven't already, these last two months of getting what we call the easiest three points, but they're probably the most important part of your paper, right? Uh, if you get a job when you get older and you forget to tell them, your address and they go to mail your paycheck somewhere they can't find that okay and you don't get paid for all the work you do this is how you get paid for all the work you do having a good heading <clears throat> makes it easier on your teachers which hey, your teachers have a tough job okay um so help us out anyway let's get into it get all this also i want you to make sure that you put a title on your paper uh what we're working on and if it's out of the CPM book, just put the lesson, that's fine. Uh, and definitely label your numbers well. And if it has letters or numbers, put this half parenthesis around them so we don't get confused with the label of the problem and the problem itself, because we use letters and numbers now, okay? All right, here we go. Starting, Adam earns $36 for every four hours of work. If he continues to get paid the same rate, A, how much will he, how long will it take him to earn $144? Ooh, that's gross. Yeah, 144 is gross. Remember that? A dozen dozens called a gross. Um, all right, so we're going to do that. And then how long will it take for him to earn $222? And then the last part, it says, how could you describe his rate for a 40-hour work week? Okay, so I don't know if you can remember doing those input-output problems, you know, where we, we figure out a pattern. Right. And then that is the first step to help us solve problems related to that. But when we figure out the function, remember the function, that's like the, you know, the draw four wild card in Uno. It's what's it's it'll apply to anything. It doesn't matter what your opponent puts down. You can put that card down. Right. When you know a function. Right. Then it doesn't matter what number they give you. You can figure out what's going to happen. OK, well, why am I bringing that up? <clears throat> because there's something we're doing ratios here. There's something called a unit rate. And a unit rate is when you take the ratio that you have and you basically divide the bottom into the top. So you have a ratio of something to one. OK, uh, unit rate. Let's put, make that rate. I said ratio is uh, okay divide the bottom or second number of your ratio into the top number or first number right uh and and the reason you do that is to get a ratio of something to one. Okay. All right. So if, if you got $2 for every weed you pulled, right? How much, uh, or for every, if you got $2 for every four we weeds you pulled, how much are you getting for every weed? Right? Well, you have this $2, or four weeds. So if I divide the bottom into the top there, right? Four into two, it won't fit. Add a decimal, add a zero, then I find out it's five. I end up getting 50 cents per weed, per one, right? And that becomes what's called a rate. And a unit rate is really valuable because then you can apply it to any number, okay? So when you're doing these ratios, 
and they want to have you apply what you know about a ratio of one situation to the other, oftentimes it's very valuable to get what's called the unit rate. And how do you do that? You take that second number and divide it into the first, or the bottom number divided into the top. Okay, so what does that mean here? If he's getting $36 for four hours of work, okay, again, you can write it 36 2 with the word 2. You can write it 36 with the colon, right, and like this, but you can also write it 36 on top and four hours on the bottom. Now, when I divide four into 36, what do you get? Well, that's a perfect fit of nine. So 36 to four is the same as $9 per one hour. Now I have a unit rate. And now every problem about how much money he's going to get made, paid becomes easier. Okay, It's a pretty cool thing. It's, it's, you're making your own draw for uno card right the wild card you're making your own wild card when you do this so why don't you try doing that okay i've already sort of done this for you you have nine dollars per hour okay now how long will it take to make 144 dollars Ooh, that's gross okay well you're going to divide nine into 144 now you're going to divide nine into 222 and that last question how should you describe his rate for 40 hour a week how much would he make in 40 hours? How about a seven-hour day? Okay. This is magic when you go do these other problems. Okay. You go try it. Uh, seven dash ten. We have this college has this college has a ratio of two to three for men to women. What is the ratio of women to men? So I'm gonna go ahead and write two to three men to women. I'm gonna put a two for the men three for the woman, and then I come over here, and the women, what's that? Three men, what's that? So the ratio of women to men, again, you have it in words. You write the numbers. It's easy. You already have it, three to two. How about women to total students? Well, this is important. Okay. Now, by the way, what is the ratio of? Right, I'm going to put these quotation marks here as a shorthand way of saying that this next question starts with the same thing. What is the ratio of, and it says women to total students. Okay. Now the, the question changed. This says what is percent, what fraction. So I couldn't do it there. So that's just a, so you know, that's a way of showing a little shorthand where you don't have to write something over and over if it's the same thing. Okay. That first part of it. So women to total students. Well, how many total students are there then? I know this is a three. What is the total? I'm going to let you try to figure that out. Now, percent, remember percent is how much of the whole you know, per hundred percent, right? Uh, how much is it of men? So I'm going to let you play with that. I, I, this is a good one to let you try on your own and see if you figure it out. Again, come back tomorrow, watch the video. Um, you know, you're you're going to do it because we're doing it in class now uh, and see how you did when we go over it. And that same thing with the fraction, right? What fraction, again, the whole would be eight eighths or ten tenths or a hundred hundredths or five fifths and tenth. Okay. See if you can figure out, and, and this is women, this is men, and this is percent, this is fraction. I sort of highlight those words sometimes, you know, underline them. You know, I can even use a highlighter here. You got one, right? Okay. Yeah, I mean, you want that to stand out because we're doing something different. There. Okay. Now, estimating fractions. Well, half of a number is easy. Half of six is three. So I'm already saying half times uh, one over two times six over five. Uh, remember, times means of. So I can estimate and get the answer at the same time. I already know this is going to be three-fifths. Half of six is three. Half of six-fifths is three-fifths. Half of six-nineteenths is three-nineteenths. Half of six-twenty-ones is three-twenty-ones, right? So that 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 one's easy because my estimate is the same. Now, four-fifths, now I'm saying, okay, four-fifths, that's about 80%. Uh, this is not quite, but, you know, eight-tenths and eight-ninths, I'm going to say just eight times eight, 64. 
that's a little bit more. I'm going to say that's about 65 hundredths, right? That's my estimate, 65 percent. Okay, three sevenths is about a half, a little bit less, right? One half of a half is about a fourth, so my estimate is about one fourth. Okay, my estimate here is the same. I know that one half is going to be. Now, how do we prove it? Now we go multiply them all, all right? And again, multiply fractions is what? Easy, right? You go straight across the top. One times six and two times five. But Mr. Daniel, you said it was going to be three fifths. Ah, I can simplify. Right? Two goes into the top and two goes into the bottom. Two goes into six. Two goes into ten. Same thing. Okay. So it's okay if your estimate is exact. You know, if you know 16 times 16 is 256 and someone says, what's your estimate for 16 times 16? You say 256. Okay, why do we estimate? Because we want to save time. Don't have 256 in your, in your mind knowing that's the exact answer and then spend more time rounding going away from the perfect answer. Okay, my two rules of estimating, get close and do it quick. Time is more important than the exact answer, but you want to be as close as you can with the time that you spend. Okay, you're going to try these two, figure out those answers. And now we're flipping over to see the last two problems. And uh, I know a lot of people are like me. My, my kid's doorway has marks uh, how tall they were at different times. Okay, so I don't know if you guys do that at home. You have to know Mr. Daniel's 80 inches tall, though, and that is the height of almost every door, right? At homes, anyway. Business is a tight bit taller. <laughs> so we have the two kids here. Kip and Jordan, okay, and it says um, that uh, their their dad sort of drew lines on the doorway, and Kip grew from 42 and three-fourths inches to 48 and three-fourths. So that picture, this must be Kip over here on this side, which means Jordan must be over here. I just copied the, the picture they had. We forgot to put the hinges in, though, didn't I? Let's put some hinges in there. All right, this is real important. We wonder what those things were. All right. Um, so it says um, uh, Kip grew from 42 and three fourths inches to 48 and three fourths. How much did he grow last year? So what do I got to do? Well, I'm trying to figure out the difference between this and this. What does difference mean? Okay. I'm rewriting this question. What is difference? You remember what it means? Important word of math. And we're saying between 48 and 3 fourths and 42 and 3 fourths. Oh, they made it easy for you. Okay. So I'm going to give you a hint real here. Difference means the difference between 7 and 4 is 3. The difference between 198 is 2. Uh-huh. Yeah, subtract. You're going to subtract on that one. Okay, so right one on top of another so you can do it, right? You want to stack them. B, Jordan was 40 and one half inches and grew five and one half. How tall is he now? Okay, so what are you doing here? He, he was 40 and one half and then he got taller five and a half. All right, I know that this is five and one half between here and here, but now I'm trying to figure out what is that? So what am I doing here? I got to add, huh? So 40 and one half plus five and one half. And then the last thing, which boy grew more last year? Now be careful on that one. Okay. Are they asking who's taller now? No. Okay. So be careful because a lot of kids figure out, okay, this person's taller so they must have grown more. Not always the case. Depends on where they started, right? So, so make sure that you are figuring out which kid grew more when you do that. And that's a good, that reminds me, um, a good thing to do whenever you finish a problem, as soon as you get the answer, is go back and read the question and say, does that make sense? Because oftentimes, you go do math and do a great job figuring out the answer to a problem. And then when you go read the question one last time, you realize you answered the question 
to a different problem, right? You answered uh, another question, not the one that was being asked. And you don't catch that till the end when you have an answer. Okay, so double check that. I'm going to let you finish that. And on 713, we're going to draw a rectangle with an area of 22 square units and then find the perimeter. So if I have a rectangle and the area is 22, how do I figure out what the sides are? Well, remember the area of a rectangle, the two sides multiplied together should equal that. So what numbers? What I'm figuring out real quick is the factors of 22. What numbers can I use to multiply to get 22? Okay. Well, I know that two goes into it. How many times? And I know that one goes into it. How many times? Does anything else go into it? Does three? Well, two plus two is four. Three and go into four. Does 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 four? Four times five is twenty. Four times six is twenty-four. Four will fit. Well, five? No, it doesn't end in a zero. Okay, so you're not going to have a whole lot of choices, but you'll have more than one. Okay, there are more than one right answer here. Draw your picture. It wants you to label the lengths. What does that mean? If I had a rectangle that was, you know, 11 by 19, that's labeling, right? That's labeling, okay? All right, now 11 times 19 is not 22, so that ain't going to work. You making your own, right? Okay, uh, good luck, everybody. Again, ask your teachers during uh, during Zoom, all right? You're going to have time to work on this in class um, if you need help, need a hint. But definitely, if you if you don't finish in class and you're at home working on it, uh, check us out in our, uh, in our uh, office hours. Okay, good luck. Welcome back. Good to see everybody. So excited.